Hi there! Um, as I said in my post, I am going to do a quick demonstration of um, using charcoal to create different forms. So, when you're learning to, to draw, what's really important is that you learn how to draw the different forms, uh, so shapes, 3D shapes, because then you can apply that to anything that you want to draw. So, um, we at OCAD, we, we uh, get the students to do a cylinder, a sphere, a cube and a cone, because it's kind of knowledge, common knowledge in the art world that those four forms make up anything that you could possibly want to observe or draw. So if you understand how the light hits those objects, uh, for those forms, and where the light and the shadow would appear and how to make that illusion of a 3D form, those four 3D forms, you can then apply that to any object that you could observe in the future. So this is kind of the first step, and then we'll build it on from there, okay? so. I've got myself some, I've lost my <laughs> block, it's somewhere, but I can use willow charcoal, oh no, it's in the, oh, there it is, okay, so a block of charcoal is good because the mark that it makes is very, very solid and very dark, you've got willow charcoal too, it's a, it's a great media, but it's going to be a lot lighter, I'll show you, but, um, having a block a piece of chalk and a rubber and then a kind of mid-tone paper is all you really need okay um it's the reason i like using the blocks as opposed to pencils with charcoal is that with pencil it's the same skill that you're applying um as graphite pencil so what we try to do at the art school is we try to get a range of skills and a range of techniques experimented with and then that gives more choice it gives more flexibility some students are going to be really good with the freedom of this media and other students prefer the real fine detail that a pencil can create so as you can see i'm drawing fairly big this well, this is a3 and i'm going to do one form this size i wouldn't do that if i was using a graphite pencil i would go much much, much smaller so in going big it also gives you a new experience of drawing in a different scale okay so there's lots of different reasons you don't have to have done the earlier task to jump into this one we call this one task three where we test out charcoal so if you're new to the channel or um, indeed the course then you can jump in at any point and just have a go at this without doing any of the prior tasks it's not a problem at all so I'm going to show you um, how to do uh, a sphere today a sphere is a, an easy form to draw initially. Now, what happens a lot um, is it's the, the forms need to be drawn fairly well to begin with. And a cylinder is quite hard to draw because you have to learn how to do the ellipse. I'll show that next week. Um, the, the cone is quite easy, as long as you get a really good equal triangle at the top, then you can just round off the bottom again, I can show you that. A cube, a lot of students struggle with because of the perspective of a cube. So again, that's another session where we can spend a bit longer learning about how to view things in perspective, which is a whole new thing. But a sphere, it's probably one of the hardest to add tone to, so shading, but it's actually... Um, so easy to draw the form because you can get something round and draw around it so i've got a big piece of tape here you could do a saucer or something but you want it to fit on an a3 page you could go much bigger than what i've done here and then with a straight edge you might just want to just put in a bit of a surface so you've got your object sat on something, it's not just floating on the page. So I always start with a kind of accurate drawing. So this is one is very easy to draw. Um, but if you are um, going to do a cylinder and the other forms, then you've got to spend time actually learning how to draw them accurately. There's no point shading a, a form that hasn't been drawn accurately, is there? So. So you want to kind of get that in place. Now I'm going to apply a, a technique and I'm going to have to draw around the shape again to show 
you how to do it in this particular technique. There isn't really a right or wrong way to use charcoal, is there? Everyone's got all their different techniques. This is just one that I really like because, as I've said before, it stretches skills. It try you get to try something brand new. Uh, it's very different to pencil. You can draw very big this way. There are just so many benefits. So let me do this sphere then, and then hopefully you can give it a go and learn how to actually visualize a sphere as a 3D form, how to apply tone um, to create illusion. And that's obviously what you're aiming for when you're doing an observation. So to start with then, I'm going to cover the page with tone. It just makes it so much more effective because then you have to think about both sides of the tonal form. So with a block, because it's compressed, it takes a bit longer but you want to cover your page with charcoal to begin with. So as you can see, I've gone over my drawing. I can just about see it, but I'll go, I'll show you how you can just make sure you can see it a bit clearer after you've done this part. Okay, so let's just cover. So I'm gonna go quite dark with this. I'm just gonna keep going. I kind of want to cover, it doesn't really matter what colour the background is. I really like brown parcel paper and I'll use that in another demo. I'm just kind of giving a range of uh, possibilities here so you get to just try different things. But a mid-tone just means not white and not black. So something in the middle, some kind of coloured paper. This is like a sugar paper so it's got a bit of texture to it. You want something like that just so the the media especially if it's in powder form like this actually goes on to the page um you know it works into the fibers of the page you probably if you've had a go at something like this before will have noticed it rubs off very easily or over time you lose your artwork it starts to fade or smudge so if you've got a textured paper it works into the fibers so as you can see i'm just covering the page now I can keep going, but we can kind of use our fingers. You can use tissue if you've got tissue. But just work the charcoal into the page and create a smooth, solid background. So we're kind of shading the whole form right now. And we're going to work backwards. So it takes away that pressure of applying this really neatly around your sphere or shape it's just so easy to do now because i used pencil i can kind of see my form i don't know if it's coming up on the camera probably not but i can see it there so any direction just to work into the fibers of the paper just completely cover all the areas There we go. So, I've got a shaded sphere, but obviously <laughs> I now need to work backwards. So I've got myself a bit of a damp cloth and some tissue to wipe my hands. This is messy. I wouldn't recommend wearing white. <laughs> And be careful, you've got lots of space, maybe even some newspaper down. Try not to blow things because the powder will come up into the air. You don't want to be breathing in things like that. Um, but yeah, if you've got a bin next year and you can knock some excess powder into or some tissue or newspaper, because it can get in your way and, and cover the, the image. So, you know, you need to knock away some powder sometimes. Right then, so I've got my wet cloth, so I've got my clean hands now. Right then, so there is a sphere in here. Um, I can kind of see it, and I've got my surface running through. You might want to get a ruler and make sure that is absolutely perfectly straight because the problem with some students, obviously, you put one line there and one's a bit higher. You're going to ruin your illusion before you've started. So, ruler, really plan out your, your drawing of the form first, okay? Right then, now. We're going to work backwards. So with a sphere, okay, so we've got a ball, okay, in there. We're going to imagine the light's coming from this kind of direction. Let me just draw 
an arrow so you can see. So we're going to imagine the lights coming in from this angle, okay? Now, if you do have a spherical candle or something and you want to put it in front of you to actually uh, observe it fully, you can do. But for me, I'm just going to do it from um, a bit of a, a memory thing just to work out how to shade a form and we can go into observation later. So with my rubber then, I am going to take away the lightest areas of this sphere. So I'm going to work backwards. So the light's going to hit my sphere here. So I'm going to take away this edge. Now I'm just using a normal eraser here, but a putty eraser works really nicely as well. And as well, having this textured paper, you're going to um, be able to rub the paper quite a lot before it starts to disintegrate, as you can imagine. So it's a rounded shape. So this light is going to be rounded to how it hits the form. So I'm just going to take away a rounded area here because that's going to be the very brightest part of the, of the form here. So kind of like with pencil, when I've done these demos before, you kind of always work when you're adding tone in the direction of your form. So my, my strokes are always, when I'm actually working with the form are always kind of going to be rounded i'm never going to be working up and down and side to side because that's gonna that will ruin your illusion of your shape okay but not so much with charcoal with pencil absolutely and that will be in another demo okay this is going to be smudged a lot and we'll be using a lot of our fingers so it's not going to be as important to follow the shape but just for the point of trying to work out where that light is i'm just going to make a circle there now down the bottom here you're going to have some refracted light off the surface around the edge so you might think that the whole sphere down the bottom here is solid shadow but it actually doesn't work like that. There's going to be some little bit of reflected, reflected light down here. So I need to just take that away to remind myself that that goes there, okay? Then, whenever you're doing a form and when you're doing observation, the edges of your form are defined by what's behind it. Okay, so this is the, the issue. When we've got lots of um, illustrators and, and people who like to do um, more, you know, animated drawings and have outlines, this is fine, but that would ruin the illusion um, of a, a proper observational drawing. So we don't want an outline on this. What we want is the surface that goes behind the object is going to be lighter than the actual sphere and that's going to define the edge of it okay so we can rub all this in afterwards properly but I'm just going to take it away so I can see where the edge of my sphere is going to be and you'll see what I mean in a bit but we just need to take away some more Seems quite silly after putting it all on to take this all away, but working backwards helps you to really think about light as well as shadow. So I really love this technique of drawing where you take away the media as well. So we can neaten this up in a bit, but the background has to be lighter than the sphere for us to see the edges of it, okay? So we've kind of got our highlights now in the right place, okay? So that's where it's going to, um, that's where the light's going to be. I need to make sure this, as I said to you guys, is in the right place. I don't think it is, there we go. What's good about uh, charcoal though, and any powder media like this, is if you got rid of too much, you can just put it back. 
it's not like you can't undo mistakes or issues with it to neaten it up so there we go okay so I'm going to make sure the edge of my sphere is really neat okay because you want that rounded edge to be a solid solid edge okay so now we kind of want to blend all of this out now and get some mid tones in there so if for example I cover this back here with my finger I can start to carefully blend so it's not so harsh from light to dark so I kind of just lift my finger off and press hard where I want it to really go into the page and then press a bit more lightly and again if you take away too much or you color too much back in then um, you can get the rubber back on there so let's just put some powder on the top there and now work that back in lifting the pressure off your finger you know in circular motions if you need to just to rub it in so it goes gradually so you see so i'm kind of just playing now with the uh the tone and it will be the same around here you kind of want to blend this edge back out but i don't want to do this too much because i want to show you something in a moment okay so i've kind of highlighted where all of these areas need to go this is going to be my mid-tone you could take off a bit more what i'm going to do now though is i'm going to just grab the chalk and use that to help now blend the rest of this and then there won't be kind of any pink showing okay so let's get this bright white light into this shape now and this is where it starts to pop i always tell students um add more light or more dark and your image will pop and this is what I mean the contrast is going to be huge and this is what you want to aim for you want a really big contrast of light to dark throughout your drawing if you start working this in and it kind of goes back to gray which it might do then you will want to um, add the white again afterwards but this is why this media is lovely because you can just keep adding and taking away so i'm just very lightly touching this you see i'm going in this circular motion because it is a sphere so i want it to stay rounded okay now i need to blend this out my finger's a bit mucky so i'll start from this side And I want it to go gradually to a bright white. Now using your finger, you're going to lose the definition of the edge of the sphere, but don't worry, we can get that back in afterwards. You've got big fingers, you find it hard. This is why drawing big helps, because this can be very big. Let's just fill this in. You can see, because my finger's mucky, it's kind of lost some of the whiteness but i'll put that back in a moment just blow that away so i can see where the edge is okay so this fear is coming a bit more to life now blend it slowly from light to dark Bright light back. Right then, define the edge again. If you've lost the edge of the sphere through the smudging, bring that back. So you want the edge to be very crisp and lovely. Let me just wipe my fingers so I don't put chalk in this bit. There we go. Just to define that edge again. There you go. Okay, so it's coming to life now. A couple more things. You can highlight the edge here. I probably don't want this too white, but it doesn't really matter. It will help just to define the edge. 
which is in your shape here. Right then. Let's just blend that in. So as you can see, there's no outline on the shape. There is just the, uh, the background of the shape, a different tone, and it's defining where the edge of the sphere is. A lot of students will keep a black outline and that obviously will ruin very quickly the form. You might have areas where the very black edge of the sphere meets the table here, the surface, and so it kind of, you know, you can't tell one from the other, but that's okay. That is what happens when you observe an object. You might find that it's so dark in some areas, there is no definition to the edge of the shape. So you can see I've kind of blurred the edge of that sphere now, but I'll put it back in a moment. Let me just get this into the background a bit. And then let's bring this back in then. Very dark and perfectly rounded. I do use the edge of my thumb sometimes and press very hard and dip would uh, create a stark edge. Okay, so we're getting there. It's going to in together. This bright edge down here would be a bright line around the edge. Now I want to put that in. I'm just pressing that really hard there. And then I'll just draw the edge back. There we go. Now, if we want to take some of this surface away, down here, just so I can make a bit of a casting shadow over on that side. I just want to lighten this surface a bit. The light would be hitting down there. But we're kind of doing this just from our imagination, so it really doesn't matter if you haven't got this perfect because when you start to observe, that's when you're going to really um, be able to see where that casting shadow goes. I wouldn't recommend doing a circular, people try to do a circular shadow on the, on the surface. It's not needed, especially when it's from memory because most likely it isn't going to look quite right. Okay, and you will have just made uh, the illusion worse. You can just make it black and just blend out. You don't need to have it so it's so um, obviously a rounded shadow. That doesn't really happen anyway. Let me lighten up around here just so I can make it go even darker. You see what I mean? I'm not going to make a rounded casting shadow. I'm just going to kind of leave it dark here. There we go. Let's bring in some more chalk on this side. There we go. So I think that kind of concludes a, a sphere. As you can see, I've done this quite big. That's a whole A4 kind of sized drawing. You wouldn't have been able to do that so quick if you were using pencils. But you can see we've kind of got a bit of a 3D form there now. Um, and if you feel confident with a sphere, um, you need to go onto a cylinder, a cone and a cube and do the exact same technique, cover the page and draw it. I'm going to do some more demos of the other forms before we start doing some observational drawing of actual objects. So I look forward to doing that. But this is going to just build skills on understanding of light and tone. It doesn't matter. A lot of students ask me, oh, I want to be able to draw faces. I want to be able to draw animals. I want to be able to draw, you know, anything specific, anything that you want to be able to draw um, as an observation. If you want to learn how to paint those things, 
this is the starting point. This is how you learn how to draw because if you can understand how forms work, how to blend and create a variety of tone from white to dark, so white to black, it has to be a very... Um, bold contrast as bright as you can in the light areas as dark as you can in the others you're going to have an image that pops and so you have to learn about the forms a nose and ear and eye everything that you could possibly draw um hair fur on an animal it all starts from understanding tone so this is why when we start on our courses with our students how to actually observe and do observational drawings this is where we start we start with the forms we start in pencil we do it in charcoal so you get two different ways of working two different medias to hold and and apply to the paper different scales then you can kind of decide which one it was more suited for you and you can start building up and to do an actual still life okay so this is the first few tasks of what we call a skill builder to learn the very basics, okay? Sometimes if you haven't got experience, this takes a bit of why, uh, a while to get right, but in getting the forms right, the rest of your art, no matter what the specialism, whether it's portraiture or landscape, whatever you want to actually go on to do, if you've got this understanding and you can draw and shade the forms, the rest will fall into place, I promise you. So task one, we did how to actually see and observe. I will cover that again when we start to draw things and add tone and we put the two together. So as I say, don't worry if you haven't done the other tasks, you can jump straight in and have a go at this. I hope it's going to help you a lot with your understanding of um, drawing and shapes and form, and tone. Um, and that's kind of the point of, of these three tasks to kind of get you uh, where you want to be with your art. So feel free to share this, to tag people in to, so they can have a go to um, very basic equipment, rubber, chalk, a block of charcoal and some paper. This could be cardboard, it could be a piece of recycling. Parcel paper is really good because it comes on a roll. I post on a website um, where there's lots of blogs and I upload all these videos to there. So check that out. I posted it onto Facebook and gave the links. Um, feel free to post your work if you want any feedback. Get in touch. My email is on the the Facebook page too, miss.graham at chsonline.com. Uh, org.uk so if you need to get in contact and you want to ask about more about the courses or just more about this task and get some general advice please get in touch but thanks for watching hopefully it's been um helpful to you we'll do some more very very soon thanks for joining me bye everyone bye for now Bye bye